Good afternoon from uh, sunny, beautiful Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, my name is Dr. David Helgeson. I'm a clinical psychologist here in Scottsdale. I've uh, been in practice for the past 30 years. Uh, also serve as an adjunct professor at Arizona State University. And um, so I'm here along with my colleague, uh, Kathy Dempsey. Would you, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Kathy Dempsey, and I, I'm a motivational speaker, an author, an expert around change or uh, shedding. And uh, some of you know me well, and we'll be seeing this on, on one of the social media streams. Uh, but for those of you who don't, uh, see that on the back of my office here. And uh, shedding is just letting go of the old and embracing the new. And it, it has a... Um, a metaphor of a lizard that you see up there that if they don't shed they die so it's kind of shed or you're dead is the mantra and uh, David and I wrote a book that that officially released in January right January this year 2020 and little did we know when this came out we had an it, we thought it was a complete list of 72 plus shed happens moments of things that occur to us, most of them we don't like, unexpect, but um, who would have thought just in a few weeks the coronavirus would have hit? Uh, I mean, one of the major shed happens uh, incidents, what, for many say, in their whole lifetime. So it, it, as a result of that, you know, David and I were talking and it's like, how can we, if this is one of the biggest shed happens moments, how can we help people who are trying to navigate through this, this challenging and tough time? So a couple things came to mind. Number one is um, we just like to offer you the book shed happens and seven ways to overcome the challenges in life and in work. Um, and we'd locked off for free uh, in, until April 30th. And so um, uh, we're going to tell you in just a minute how to, to download that one free. And the second thing is we wanted to do just several short videos like we're going to do today and give you some tips and strategies that you can practically put into place to navigate the next few weeks or months or however long this is going to be with us. All right. So thank you, Kathy. So, you know, when 2020 started out, for most of us, I would say the American people were as optimistic as they've ever been for decades. You know, the economy was booming, the stock market was uh, having all time highs, unemployment was lower than it had been in decades. You know, I think most Americans would say, wow, life is good. And then boom, all of a sudden we, you know, we hear some stories about some weird virus in China and still at that point, for most of us, we're like, well, you know, I feel sorry for the Chinese, but you know, we're over here, thousands of miles away, nothing we have to worry about. But then we start hearing it's now it's in Italy, now it's in other countries in Europe, and boom, all of a sudden, it's here in the USA. And now it's been in every state of our country, along with 148 plus countries around the world. So, you know, it's, it's a shed happens that um, we're gonna have to deal with. And of course, it's causing lots of fear and anxiety uh, among people across the country. Uh, I would say for a number of reasons. One, because of the unpredictability of this. You know, that makes us anxious when we can't predict what's gonna happen. Um, the uncontrollability, you know, we don't have a, successful treatment for this we don't have a vaccine uh, so it you know it makes us anxious when we're out of control and then finally the uncertainty about how long is this going to last right I mean we've been told uh, a lot of places in the country to quarantine or to shelter in place is the term that's being used and for most of us you know we say okay well if I have to stay in my house for a couple of weeks I can handle that, it's not a problem. But what if the couple of weeks turns into three or four weeks or a couple months or six months, you know? Um, most of us uh, are gonna have some trouble in, 
and it's gonna be really tiresome and we're gonna get stir crazy and it's not gonna be pleasant at all. Um, and of course, besides all the anxiety about what could happen, what might happen, there's kind of some depression or, uh, from grieving um, our regular routines. You know, I'm kind of a stabilizer person myself. And I like my regular routines. And before this all happened, you know, I would, I went to the hot yoga studio four or five times a week. If I didn't feel like doing that, um, I'd go to LA Fitness and boom, I go to the yoga studio. Oh, I'm sorry, we're closed. So well, I'll just go to LA Fitness. Oh, no, we're closed down for now. Uh, so then I thought, well, I can at least go get a massage, massage envy. No, we're closed. And even my favorite restaurants where I'd like to stop for a quick bite to eat on the way home, maybe have a glass of wine, all closed. Right. So we've all been experiencing one loss after another, and it can get rather depressive. Um, and even though what I just explained are minor inconveniences in some ways, it's hitting many Americans much more hard, including my son who had two part-time restaurant jobs. So he's unemployed now, has no income. And of course, thousands of people are sick and many people are dying and you know, over 3 million people have filed for unemployment now. So this is hitting all of us physically, financially, emotionally. Um, so this is one of the reasons why Kathy and I wanted to jump on and, and give you some strategies to help you get through this crisis. Yeah, so, so one of the things we just wanted to talk today is uh, uh, about chapter number one and that's own the challenge and you know, the question that we talk about that is it is this my problem to own or not? And some of you would say, coronavirus isn't my problem. I, I didn't cause it, I didn't create it. I mean, I mean, but bottom line, it is really all of our problems. I mean, we're having to deal with the effects of it, even though we didn't cause it. And and so I think that's one of the uh, frustrating things is to really just first step, just own what's happening and don't deny it, don't run away with it, you know, um, don't cope with it in negative ways. But, but what, are, what are some action steps, um, David, that, that you think, I mean, some of them I, I know we've heard a lot of, heard from our doctors, heard on the news um, that, that are healthy for us to own the problem. Own the challenge. Right. Well, three, you know, a couple things that we've been hearing for weeks now, and hopefully we're all paying attention and following this advice is, of course, to wash your hands thoroughly um, many times and to wash for at least 20 seconds, and which people tell us if we sing the happy birthday song twice, that's about 20 seconds. Uh, so we need to do that. Uh, the social distancing. You know, keeping six feet away from each other. Um, I think people are, at least in my experience, trying to do that in most places. And, you know, I've tried to replace my yoga and my weight training by going out and hiking. And so far, they haven't closed the hiking trails in Arizona, at least. But they have been monitoring how many people they let on the trail. And whenever I would pass someone, uh, they would be very careful to stay six feet away. So some of the advice I'm giving my clients are to act as if you've already contracted the virus, whether you have it or not. And if you do that, you're probably going to engage in the proper hand washing. You're going to engage in the social distancing, probably stay at home more. Um, so if you do that, you know, you're not going to infect anybody if you have it. And of course, you're probably going to protect yourself in the process. Um, so those are, uh, you know, practical things we've all been told. Um, and then, you know, I would say, you know, develop an attitude of gratitude and be thankful. Um, most of us have lots of things to be thankful for. We have a roof over our head. You know, we've got plenty of food in our pantries to tide us over for a while. 
Um, so most of us are in pretty good shape. And, and, and I think one of the things that we want to talk about in our next short video is, you know, not everybody, though, may have their pantry full or enough toilet paper or even a home. You, you see all these homeless people that um, um, are, are struggling right now. And, and, and so the second chapter of Shed Happens is ask for help ask for help. So, so we'd like to talk about that a little bit um, on our next uh, Short Shed Happens video. Uh, but let me tell you before we, we jump off here, uh, we talked about downloading the book free. You got that in, in for the next month. So if you go to kathydempsey.com, K-A-T-H-Y-D-E-M-P-S-E-Y.com forward slash shed happens, plural, uh, it'll take you to the page. You can download the book free there and uh, share it with whoever you want to as many times as you want to. Uh, we want it to be a, a resource to help you uh, during this, this time. Absolutely. So we'll look forward to seeing you on our next, uh, our next video call. So thanks again for joining us. And if you know of anybody, again, that would be helpful by watching this video, again, you can to us. You'll see it on social media, I'm sure. Thanks, guys. See you next time. Okay. I think that went great. Okay, how come I'm still alive? Oh, I didn't leave me. Okay. Yeah, the only thing. Don't, you really left me.